that you went through a lot of school and yet you came out sort of diversifying the ways you're interacting with people. But mm. for, for a lot of people to go in school, they become narrower and narrower in their focus and their specialty. And it seems like you have to really consciously cultivate that kind of interaction, that kind mm. of network, right? Mm. Because it isn't in our nature, probably, mm. to stay connected to so many different kinds of people. Like, mm. where would you start? Well, I would probably start by thinking about what ideas am I really excited about? Some people take into their own personal mission uh, some form of evangelism, or that's actually about the gospel, or just evangelism, you love a sports team, or you like half zip sweaters or whatever it is. So if you have that thing, then we're on a mission. We're gonna like bring this to other people. In terms of stitching together the network that would help you do that, which could be a kind of a side hustle. If you're an entrepreneur, it's really around your company, right? So building networks of people are incredibly valuable to making companies possible, raising capital, recruiting people, product feedback, et cetera. And I might begin with kind of an audit of who you are. So if except is true, we are homophilic. So think through, you know, your age and your race and your gender and where you went to school and where you live and uh, where you spend time on the internet, what kind of news you read. And just assume that you're, you know, probably pretty well networked in that sphere of people. And then I'd ask, okay, what kinds of people would be really helpful to the sort of work that you're doing? I think intentional side hustles can be great surface area to meet people out of your line of work. So let's say you live in Austin, Texas, and you are a senior operations manager working at Dropbox, right? So you kind of know tech people. Joining the board of a local nonprofit could be an interesting way that even if you don't personally love the mission of the nonprofit, it's just sort of added surface area. You could be involved in the alumni association of your university. You could take an intellectual interest in something and start tweeting or writing a blog about it and ask to interview people. When I was working at Facebook, I, without uh, any authorization, uh, organized a sort of internal executive speaker series. And so I just emailed all the execs and copied <laughs> their assistant. I said, you know, hey, Zuck is available one of these three weeks, which one works best for his schedule. And so we kind of ran this internal speaking series and, and HR people were like, where's this event series coming from? And it's like, <laughs> he booked it, I don't know, let's just do the thing. And so um, there are ways to sort of be creative in side hustles to just give yourself more access. I'm really glad you asked about that because there's this great book called Never Eat Alone by Keith Ferrazzi. And there's some weird things in the book that I would probably not encourage doing. But he talks a lot about, you know, when you increase your, your luck surface area, more deals come your way. And so he really challenges you to think about this. He argues that most interesting things, most of the most interesting things that will come to you in your life, they will come to you. You do not originate them. You may start a few, but someone calls you an invitation. Let's take this trip together. Let's start this company. Let's invest, whatever. So then you kind of back him. You say, well, why would the deal have come to you? Why would someone think John's the guy that does this thing? And the apparatus you'd build to sort of lubricate that, you know, those inbounds, those leads really about opportunities in life is first to build a brand. I'll be like, oh, I don't have a brand that's so kind of commercial. Well, mm -hmm. people that say things like that, they have a brand, they just don't know it. And it's probably not very good. So what is your brand? Let's define what that brand is. John loves these kind of political ideas, making documentaries and whatever. Legos. Then, Legos, yeah, he loves <laughs> Legos. Um, so you got this brand, so let's define the brand. And then let's think about how can you stay top of mind among people who are most likely to have cool opportunities for you. So in your business case, you guys make really amazing documentary films. How would people be reminded that this is what you do such that when they have a thought and they meet someone who needs someone that you're like you, because you're excellent at it, they're like, oh, you got to call John, right? So it kind right. of backs you in a little bit of like, okay, what am I about? What do I want to be known for? And then how can I, in, in not weird ways, make that kind of lightly known on social media, in conversations or whatever. Last thing on this, I spend time with a lot of lawyers. I'm married to one, it's okay. <laughs> and what I notice about so many young lawyers especially is they're sort of embarrassed by what they do. You know, you ask them, uh, well, you know, what kind of work are you in? And it's this classic, it's like, um, I'm at Wilson. Or like they look down, they're like, Sam, like you busted your butt getting to this great law school and getting this fancy job, like own it, you know? But I hear you, you don't wanna talk about corporate transactions. You need a thing. And the thing is probably not what you spend your days doing. And so I enjoy thinking with people about what is their thing. And it's some sort of like weird hobby that you're interested in, some idea, some set of books, some hobby or something. And uh, that can be great surface area, even just a cocktail party conversation. Like, what are you involved in? My father-in-law teaches me that, especially when talking with all kinds of people. It's a great question. Don't say, what do you do? 
Yeah. What keeps you busy or what are you involved in? And so if you're asked that question, uh, where are you gonna drive that conversation? If you enjoyed this clip, we've got more where that came from. Be sure to check out my full conversation with Evan Baer. And one of the best ways you can support us is to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss our interviews and short videos as they come out each week. Thank you.